Andreas Bremer is from the IFA Automotive Market Research Institute. Welcome. Thank you. Is consolidation welcome right now? Uh, I think it's pretty much the, a necessity for, for most brands. Um, technology is moving ahead so quickly on, on different levels. Uh, you look at the e-car movement, you look at the digital transformation that's happening. So um, uh, I think that most brands are, are bound to work with someone else, whether it's corporation or mergers. Now that's a different story. And as far as technology goes, there's a, a lot changing right now. There's the, the gas versus electric cars exactly. at the moment, which is a really difficult balance to strike for car makers when it comes yep. to costs. That is what's driving a, a lot of consolidation right now, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Re research and development is, is very expensive. Uh, you, you're really basically building two different vehicles at the same time. One that is very profitable and one that isn't at the moment. At least not yet, exactly, exactly. The numbers just aren't there. Uh, but yet everyone feels it's the, it's the coming uh, uh, trend. You have to be there, you have to be there quickly. You have to get all the knowledge that's involved and understand the technology. And the only way to do that is to cooperate with others because it's just simply too expensive and too complex. But there's never been this amount of cooperation in the car sector. What does it mean for the motorist? Well, it's, it's uh, interesting for the motorists because the brands uh, need to differentiate themselves. And this is getting more and more difficult. Um, that also means that more brands may be on your top of mind when it comes to purchasing new cars. So there's a lot of opportunity and risks, of course, depending on which side of the brand you are. Um, so that, that's very, a very interesting and exciting time. Well, give me an example. Someone who drives a, a BMW, they love their BMW because it's a BMW. What happens when Toyota's involved? Yeah, like it is. <laughs> uh, like BMW used to stand for the uh, six-cylinder inline engine. Mm. They're cooperating with Toyota on hybrid engines and other uh, cars in, in that sector. So you, you have to begin to wonder, what's, what's, BM, what's still genuine BMW and what is Toyota? What am I getting? Um, it is very important that the brands manage to differentiate themselves. And I'm sure that BMW and Toyota have worked this out before they started their cooperation. They're both very different. Very different. And then the, but they're also active in different markets. So it's not that difficult. If you have players that are uh, playing in the same segment, in the same market, things get a lot more difficult. And autonomous driving suddenly uh -huh. becomes so much more complicated when it comes to cooperation. You have not just one or two car makers uh, coming together, but sometimes four or five. Exactly, exactly. Uh, that's the other big trend currently uh, that de demands a lot of time and money. Um, and it's also, um, it'll be interesting to see how that affects the brands. Because suddenly, with an autonomous car, you're going from A to B. Where's the emotion in driving? Mm -hmm. you know, what does that do to a brand? And, and uh, marketing departments are, are going crazy over that because they haven't all figured it out yet because we don't know how quickly it is all coming around. And something that's so exciting for so, so many people suddenly becomes so boring. Exactly. That's exactly the point. Um, if, if your uh, key to success has been emotion so far, the joy of driving or whatever you want to call it, suddenly there's a car that goes there by itself and you can be asleep at the time. Mm, <laughs> it'll, be difficult. it'll be really a difficult sell. The car makers cannot afford to sleep at the wheel. Andreas, thank Definitely. you very much for coming in today. <laughs> Certainly.